we're talking about self-sabotage. And I think it's an important topic because ever since I started getting ready for this, I realized that self-sabotage was an integral part of a lot of the things that I had been doing. And I was that surprised me a little bit. This whole article here is how to overcome your self-sabotage. Do you have the time you need to enjoy life as well as your achievements? You know, so many people, they always talk about the Americans because we work the most, have the most, but we don't have, we take the least amount of vacation time of any, you know, country. You know, in France, they're out there taking a month off a year, calling it holiday. And every other country, they have like a month, more. I'm not talking teachers. I'm talking people who work at anywhere. They, they, have a, they enjoy their lives. I can't, I, I don't know about many of you, but sometimes I feel like I'm in a rat race. You know, I'm doing this, doing that, working, doing, doing. And then where's the time to just kind of kick back and lounge and enjoy the things, pray even, go to church. Part of that self-sabotage happens when we're overextended, when we're, we're tired, when we're doing things. And if losing weight is not working well for you, like this, when you know something is not working well for you, if you're not getting the results which you know you should, then some form of self-sabotage self is probably involved somewhere around the line. Think about that. Those of you who really are struggling, think about some sort of self-sabotage. Are you afraid? One person, they lost a lot of weight, and her husband's friends started joking with her. Like, whoa, you're looking fine. I hope your husband doesn't come home. Maybe I'll show up Friday night. They were kidding. Scared the crap out of her. She started putting weight on. She was just so afraid that men were going to start to look at her. Many times people who had some sort of abuse in their younger years would try to make themselves less attractive by gaining weight or whatever. We need to look at the reasons why we might be self-sabotaging ourselves. I joke about it. I, I used to say, you know, I'm not going to get to my goal weight and run off with Brad Pitt. I'm not worried. That's not, Bob and I aren't worried about our marriage. I think you get to a certain point in your life where you want to get healthy and you want to look good and, and, and live a healthy life. I don't think any of us in this room are trying to be a movie star. And if you are, I apologize ahead of time. Um, <laughs> You know, one of the things that we do to overcome our self-sabotage is, is, is we tr think about the things we might be doing when we're acting without integrity, when we, when we think the end justifies the means, when we constantly overeat or not exercise. We rationalize this behavior. Well, it's Friday night, and I had a really rough week at work. I'm getting that pizza, and I'm getting, having those beers, and, you know, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. We rationalize it. Poor me, I had it rough. If you're doing that one day, and then you do it the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Or I say to people, bread and you should not be on speaking terms. You need to really take a look at your life and your locks and say, okay, I'm going to have some bread on Friday. I've said it before. Even though you know you should be doing something, you still don't do it. Not doing what works also includes the converse, doing things which experience tells you do not work for you. If you're doing the same things every week, having the same number on the scale, and they don't work for you, why are you doing it? You want more time for yourself, yet decline to do anything realistic about it. You're overworked, yet you feel you have no choice, you must do what you're doing, but that very thought is pure self sabotage. You always have a choice, which of course has consequences. When they say, oh, Ellen, you'd be so great at running this committee. You, nobody can do it better than you. I am so sorry. I'd love to. I really, really want to do it, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to say no. And then you say no over and over, and pretty soon they'll go away, maybe. Or they'll email you and you just won't answer their email, which is what I've been doing lately. When you're in a hole, the first thing you do is to stop 
digging. If you're in a hole and you're still digging, you need to stop and see why you're in that hole. If you allow others to run your life, so many people say they eat things because somebody puts it in front of them. You, you don't bring up things for the sake of peace and quiet. We also think, I'm right, so you must be wrong. I, I'm a little bit guilty of that. I don't know. Is anyone else guilty of that? Where you think, well, geez, I'm right. Well, they must be wrong. You automatically believe your thoughts. Oh, I do that. Oh, I'm, I, think it, I think it. It must be true. We are very gullible. We break our word. It's funny. I really am a person of my word, except to myself. Like, I, if I say to you, oh, I'm going to get you there, I will get it to you. If I say, I'm going to be there at, you know, this time, and I'm going to be at Pray It Up, you can count on it. But if I say, well, Ellen, you're going to take an hour for yourself tonight, and you're just going to read your book. I break words to myself all the time. All the time. Other people, I would never do that to. This is who we have to look at. And then, yes, but... I cannot tell you how many excuses I hear at the scale. There's a few choice ones tonight that I, I pocketed away because if I said them tonight and you heard them and you knew you said them, you'd be mad that I'm repeating them. But a couple weeks from now, you'll forget you said it and I'm going to bring it up because they're choice, choice. Expecting perfection. If we fail, it is our first attempt in learning. Fail, F-A-I-L. First attempts in learning. I've gained weight every time I've lost weight, but it was my first attempts in learning. I just needed that lesson more and more. Okay, I want you to read the rest of these at home where you believe in carefully selected evidence or you, you just are untruthful for the sake of peace and quiet. You say you don't have the time. That's big. I don't have the time is why we're not really fit and healthy. Trash talking to yourself. Well, no wonder I don't lose weight. I'm a big loser. I'll have just one more drink. I think I've said that a couple of times. <laughs> just one more. Uh, we talk ourselves out of attempting something desirable. Well, do I really want to get to my goal weight? Because I'm really feeling good right where I am. Maybe I'm happy where I am. Maybe I shouldn't even worry about it anymore. We're having this big, long conversation. Deny the obvious. If you look in the mirror and you see some fat rolls, and you say, those are just love bumps. You might be denying the obvious. All right, I'm going to stop right there, Bob. <laughs>